haven't introduced her as yet. And uh, just watching the space while it comes in and as it comes in and as it comes in. And then, because you know, a while ago, ladies and gentlemen, we were just in the process of starting and then everything was perfect. We was having a chat and then everything just went crash. It's like, it's like, <laughs> It's like, a, it's like it's a 5G onslaught or something like that. I don't know what it was. <laughs> but without further ado, we, we're back and I can see it's on live. So listen, thank you so much for coming on. And um, and if you're coming on now, just please share share this video. What I'm going to do actually is to, to share it and um, do a couple shares as well, put it in a couple groups and, uh, and just get cracking. But listen... Ladies and gentlemen, as I said, good afternoon and welcome to, to the show Business and Lifestyle Live. And as I said, I decided to really start this segment a bit earlier due to COVID um, situation, which is happening, the pandemic. And I said I wanted to somehow give uh, some add value. I would say this, add value to people's lives. Give them some value at this moment now. But of course, as a person who really have a platform, what I've decided to do is to get key persons on board so they can actually add the value to you and of course to me. So today I have Miss Nicola Millington. She's a CEO of FP Comms and a business marketing haven. I mean to say she's a top dog in her field. Now we don't call people top dog and I'm trying to say, and I mean they're not Snoop Dogg dog or something like that. You know? um, <laughs> Now, Nicola, Nicola Millington as well, I, I, I choose not to read all of her bio because we'll have to have another show for that. <laughs> but she's an ethical, small growing business marketing maven using PR to promote the determined, the rule breaker, the system disruptor, intercession mash of everything, uh, the revolutionary, and importantly, the creative. These are the CEOs, entrepreneurs, business owners, founders, directors, and legacy builders who are tackling issues head on and with an absolute passion and fervor. Now, over 16 years, she's been in the business. Now, Nicola, good evening. Hi. And thank you for Hi. coming to the show. Uh, much appreciated. So Hi, thank you. Yeah, yeah. So tell me now, how have you been dealing, dealing with COVID, this pandemic? To be totally honest with you, Silborn, I have found this the most fantastic time ever. I really have. It has... Personally, it has made me slow things down, really yes. reassess and um, re readjust many of my own business and personal um, things. Um, but from a global point of view, in some ways, it's really begin began the journey of what I have been focused on all yes. those years ago. When I speak about ethical businesses, there are key points that I'm really focused on because ethical can mean so many things to so many people and so yeah. things like a living wage a living wage is not the same as a minimum wage so a living yeah. wage was very much paramount in the businesses that i would work for which is why i call them the disruptors and the rule breakers because implementing something like that is not seen as a normal thing because they mm. say you know salaries is one of the biggest assets um things that you have to run a business mm. and people will try to pay people as minimum as possible but yes. there is a there's a real deficit when we think like that. So for me, it has really I feel as if now the world is beginning to see what I have been trying to advocate in my own little way before. Yeah. That, that's interesting. And and what you said was very key is that at this time it is giving you some time of um, you accept it. I mean, you're not fighting the process, you actually going through with this process and being more creative and learning new things as well. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Now, now, as I said, one of the things that I wanted to do was within a period of 30 minutes or so, just to really set out what are like your key gems or key tips that you give persons during the course of this time so they can yeah. use add value to their life. Yeah, what would you say? Um, yeah. I mean, for me, um, so I'll go through and thank you, Silbon, again for yeah. this opportunity. And I'm really grateful, actually, that we have a UK platform, yes. a UK based platform to do something like this and to get our own UK experts, not just the American ones, to talk. So yes. for me, this is fantastic. 
Um, in regards to five key tips, that was really difficult to, to hone down because ultimately you can say so many things to help people in so many ways. But yeah. I stayed focused on those people that I always serve, which are the people that want to be the world changers. Yeah. And so the first thing I would definitely say is really get your foundations as solid as you possibly can. Mm. And I'm talking about your physical foundations, i.e. your business plan, your um, your marketing plan, your PR strategies, your accounts, all those kind of things, as solid as you possibly can when you are starting your business and as you're readjusting your business. Yeah. I'm talking about your mental foundation. It's so important. And you will see as you're growing your business as a small or isolated business, owner and you grow and expand your mental well-being is so yeah. so important um for me also i add spiritual and emotional in there um as well for me i think you need to be grounded in something you need yeah. something to hold you solid when those times are turbulent some people call it you know faith but some people might find meditation something that they need yeah. to work on whatever your religious belief or spiritual practice is you need to really hone down on that and emotionally learning to communicate effectively, speaking to people, letting them know, you know, the, 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 the I don't know, the journey you're going through, the traumas yeah. you're, you're encountering, the, the journey you're, you're encountering as you continue to build your business. It's not something that anyone has got a blueprint for in 100% of the way. People, the greatest entrepreneurs have learned through failure. So yeah. you are going to be no different. But as soon as you've got your foundation and with your foundation, I think I heard Julian maybe mention this before, the systems that you have in place. Yes. So as you build your foundations, you will begin to hone and fine tune your systems. And your systems is what then leads you to your legacy. Your systems is what leads you to scale your business to the next level. Otherwise, you'll continue to work in your business and not on your business. So right. for me, building those foundations is the key. And this is a prime opportunity because now you don't you can't say you don't have the time to sit down and review right. your business plan. Right. And I work with so many business owners that come to me with a great idea, great concept, and they said, right, we want to get ahead and promote. And I'm just like, who are we promoting to? Who are we talking to? Do you have a business plan? No, it's in my head. With all due respect, I'm not a mind reader. And no one else is either. So you have to put it down in writing and you so, have to build from there. So, so the key thing, yeah, first, sorry, sorry, Nicola, yeah. No, so that's my very first point. So, so the key thing in what you've set out there now is at this moment and at this time, reassess your foundations, isn't it? Absolutely. I've done it. And, and, and in doing so, I have re, I've been able to readjust actually even my working times so i have seen how we can maximize maximize our working time as a company and work less hours and achieve greater success but that's because i've sat down and really honed in to the systems in place and technology now is going to allow that to happen because we won't be spending an hour to work and an hour back there'll be people at home that can be efficiency or cost. Are you really sitting down and, sit and assessing that? But you won't if it's all up in your head. Put it down, build those but, foundations, and then move from there. I, I like the point what you said. You know, you got the time because you're not driving to work and back. Many people um, normally who are working actually from home at this point normally mm -hmm. battle through the train. Myself will battle through on the motorway. And I find myself in a situation whereby I'll be sitting doing court hearings, get up, and do it just yeah. like that. I, I got to be. I had to remind myself of my one of my coach who, who came on the show recently, Mr. Anthony Francis, when he said, "Sibra, make sure that you dress as if you're going to work still." I <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sure. say so you got to keep that sort of mindset going. So it's very important what what you're saying. Um, so the the next one that you're talking about is leveraging and um, leveraging your network and not um, abusing them. Um, and what I mean by that, and, and leveraging the knowledge of your network, what you yeah. find is that a lot of um, business owners, when they're starting up specifically, it's not so much growing business. I think you learn as you go along the value of your network. And I think there's a lady, there's a, no, I don't think, there's a lady called Dana who I heard this from who said, your network is your net worth. Yeah. And that is so true as you are starting out in business. So for people that are starting out in business, 
Or again, if you're reassessing your business, recognize that there are people within your network, your trusted tribe, who you can go to and ask some real serious and honest questions about how you are going to tackle building your business. Yes. Um, and I know that many people find that difficult because, A, they don't know if they can, um, they don't want to trouble those people. So that can be tri quite trialing. But the other thing is also that sometimes they don't think that their idea is good enough or their business is good enough. So they're a bit ashamed of doing that. Do not be ashamed. Go to your lawyer, your friend that's a lawyer or your friend that may know someone that's a lawyer. Go to your friend that's very good with numbers who may be able to help you to drill down on your numbers in your business plan. Go to your friend that may know marketing PR. I've got loads of friends who who don't work with me per se, but they will call me up and say, Nicola, this is my plan. This is my thought process. What do you think? And they will lean on me for that. And it's an honor and a privilege to be able to help your friends. Yeah. And so your friends will be willing to help you, but there is that fine, fine line of not abusing that. So for instance, some of my friends, those same friends, they will say to me, okay, Nicola, I want you to sit down and help me with a marketing plan, for instance. And I will say to them, that's my job. So I will charge them for my job. But yeah. if they need me to help them to come to an event and assess how they can market to those people um, differently, I'll say to them, yeah, I'll come down and spend two hours with you and help you on the door and speak to the people. Because that's, right. that's not what I do. I'm helping my friend. So you'll, yeah. you'll be surprised how your network can also really help you to grow your business. And the other thing that's really important about using your tribe is it cuts out a lot of the other um, ambiguous noise that's out there because we have a lot of information out there. So how do you know that the information you're receiving is right for your business? And yeah. if you've got friends, that, again, that are expert in their fields, they'll be able to shortcut a lot of the noise. So you don't have to read thousands of blogs to find out how to, I don't know, create a Facebook page, for instance. So, so, what, so what you're saying then, instead of reaching out too far or stretching yourself too widely, look at your access, the persons who are in your space, if anything. So yes. therefore, for argument's sake, if I want to look at some stuff regarding marketing instead of me starting to let me do a research and see if i can get someone is look and say hang on a second there's nicola i should just pop over to nicola and just have a chat with her and do some business yeah, with exactly nicola, your point, isn't it? yeah so it is actually utilizing and uh, I, I guess what you're saying and for people's benefit is for persons to actually be wise with their time at yes. the same time yeah absolutely yeah. Well, well, ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank you so much for coming on. I, I have with myself today uh, Miss Nicola Millington. She's the CEO of FP Camps, uh, Business Marketing Raven, and uh, she's here on the Business and Lifestyle Live. Please share this video as much as possible, and I'm um, invite your friends and on YouTube on replay back. Please share it and let have your comment and view as well. Uh, Nicola, yes, going on as we look at some of the key nuggets from the Maven. <laughs> <laughs> Please, please explain what is a maven because people so, are saying, um, actually. Maven. Diana that came up with that title for me and like with my tagline marketing with love, maven was one of those things that I kind of like stepped back from because I didn't think I was I earned that kind of acknowledgement, if you want. But maven is basically like a an oracle of information, is the best yes. way. To and that's experience, but they give more from not just their experience physically, but they give from a very emotional space as well. It's very much a mother figure. Mm, okay, okay. Like a mother hen then, spreading her wings and keeping everybody. More, I think more than a mother. I think like Oprah is a maven kind of thing. Okay. It's like the, the source of information and the person that connects other people. And uh, But also there's a nurturing in there. That's, that's yeah. Okay, fantastic. Okay, so moving on now, as we get into the gems, um, what do they say next one is? So my next point, mate, um, Silburn, would be be patient. That's, and that's hard. Um, Sorry? That's hard for people. That's <laughs> point. But they have no choice. Got to go to stay in. Boris says stay in. You can't go nowhere. <laughs> Keep going. <laughs> <laughs> um, and the reason why I really... Um, promote that is because one um people think that building a business comes very quickly and results come very very quickly and it doesn't and if you listen to most very successful people they will tell you it's a period of time before you become an overnight success 
be kind to yourself as you're building your business. And yes. really don't try to outrun the process. Enjoy the process as much as you can and be patient with results. And also, when you are building your business, and I think I'll come on to this a bit later on, but recognize the experts that you are reaching out to, you pay for it in one or two ways. You pay for it in time yes. or you pay for it with money. And with time, you get access. So actually, it's not so much time. You pay for it in access and you pay for it in time. So again, I'll use a PR as an example. The difference between a PR expert in fashion and someone that's just a PR expert would be the PR expert in fashion, if you're a fashion person, will charge you £10,000 to do a two-month campaign. Mm -hmm. But the access they'll be able to give you will outreach that £10,000. Right. Whereas a person that's very good at PR, they will be able to give you the same service, if you want, of PR over a longer period of time at a cheaper rate. And yes. so you have to really scale, really weigh up what's important for you. So when yes. you're starting out in business, most people don't have £10,000, but they still want the results. They don't always come with each other. So be patient with yourself as you are building and realize that you're learning steps as you go along. And there's no harm in being a 20-year overnight success. Right. <clears throat> so I, I put myself in the position with what I've been doing since 2015. Like some persons would say. And I to know I've spoken to you since then. <laughs> yeah, I think we, I think we spoke before, you know, and stuff like that for a long time. Yeah. And, and, and people always say, why don't you um, do this and do that? And I always say, I'm not in a rush. I'm on a long, I'm on a, I'm on a mission. I like to say I'm a missionary. You know, yeah. <laughs> I'm a missionary. I'm on a mission. You know what I mean? So therefore, I'm not in a rush. I'm not trying to. I'm just on a mission. I'm, I'm building. I'm, I'm on a global business building network. And, and as you rightly say there, that is so very important for persons to really know where they're going and the patience because they will, uh, I guess what I'm picking up is that person will sometimes run ahead of themselves, maybe trying to outrace others and realizing that their USP or, or their plan or their activity or their blueprint is separate and different. Yeah. Absolutely. And I would say that, I mean, I remember when I was doing my degree, for instance, my, my, my lecturer turned around and said to me, he fell three times before he got his PhD. Yes. It, it, it's just that sometimes it's just the nature of the beast. Yes. Yes. That's, 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 that's very interesting. Okay. Yeah. So, Good. Sorry, go on. So no, so what I wanted to lead straight into actually is follow up with investing in yourself. Mm. I think so many people think that um, as you're building your business, everyone else will believe in your dream and have to fall into line because you're doing such a great service to the world. Mm -hmm. Your vision and your, your business idea is your vision and your business idea, and it's up to you to build it. So right. that means reach out to your friends and ask them for help, ask them for support. But you have to reach out to them. You have to take the initiative. And that is all in the investing in yourself. So investing in yourself is not just money. Mm -hmm. It's you taking initiative to know that actually my plan A to plan Z, uh, my plan A to Z takes so many different steps. And I'm going to invest to carry people right the way through. And I'm a classic example of that. Yes. I left a very well paying job to to start my own agency. And yes, yes my, you know, my mum spent a lot of money and time and energy educating her children. And so therefore, you can well imagine the look that comes when you say you're going to jump out and do marketing as a career because I was that's, doing something totally that's, different. That's, that's not a real job, is it? That's not a real job. Of course not. <laughs> so I, but I knew from day one. I wasn't going to sit there and convince her that I was right. I knew it in my own soul. So yes. I had to do the work. And I, that meant I had to invest in myself, whether it be spending time on courses, reading, speaking to different people, failing. All of those things are investing in yourself. And so many people believe that other people should believe in your dream. No one, no one should believe in your dream more than you. 
no one because it's not their dream it's your dream yeah. Yeah. and it's yeah. your yeah. responsibility it's your gift it's your thing that you're supposed to bring to the world yeah. so invest in yourself and that does take time it does take money it does take your energy it does take people not believing in you, but you have to invest in yourself. And that includes exactly what I said at the beginning as well, the foundations. But when you focus on that, you invest in yourself because you will see the blueprint in front of you. Now, the bit about that nobody um, will know your dream. And I always say that sometimes if someone says, I, I don't believe in their dream, I can't see it. I say, that's correct. You're perfectly correct. You will not see it because it is not yours and it is not for, for you. So that's why you won't see. So how do you translate that now into people to believe your dreams? So somebody said, when I got this dream and I know that, as Nicola said, nobody will see it because it's, it's yours. Now, how do we translate that now, that dream, so people can actually buy into it? Yeah, I mean, you have, you have, I mean, the bottom line is you have to, you have to put yourself out there, put it down in writing, let the world see that actually this is what I'm trying to achieve. And, and once you, you do that, people will get invested in you. And this also, can, may I just say as well, yeah. Silborn, why it's so important to know, again, with building your foundations, so important to know your, your focused audience. Because once you know who you are trying to serve, it just becomes easier for you to do the job you're supposed to do. Right. That, that, is, that, is, that is a very crucial one, because if you're not careful, as we also said earlier, you could be all over the place trying to please everybody. Well, exactly. And I'm, I mean, that's the, that's one of the things that you hear people say, like if, you know, let's just say, for instance, um, they're selling um, Caribbean food. Let's just use that as an example. Um, yeah. Food provision. Right. Oxygen. Let's say Oxygen. provision. And you'll say, they'll say things like, but I, I, you know, everybody can eat that. But your, yeah. your target audience is still not everybody. There's some people that won't understand the food. And if you if those are the people that you're targeting, that's a different way of communicating to them. Mm. I, I see where you're coming from. So therefore, it's very important to know your craft then. Yeah, I, it is. I know exactly who, who, who are the people who are actually going after your craft. Ladies and yes. gentlemen, while you're in isolation, lockdown, um, this is also a time to learn and a time to actually get some new skills, get some new, um, uh, what should I say, training and utilize that time because you got time. Now, ladies and gentlemen, as I said before, I'm with Nicola Millington on the Business and Lifestyle Live and also she's uh, CEO of FP Comes. Thank you for coming. Business and Marketing Maven, which is Nicola, 16 years in the business and is willing to share her tips today on, on the show. And as we continue now, as we, as we, land you know what is the last or maybe the key factor now that people need to be uh, astute So journalists is to approach you to get press coverage. There's certain things they're going to want from you. And yeah. some of them will include things like high resolution photographs. Now, you're not going to know that if you haven't built the foundations at the very beginning because you would have done your research, right? Yes. So, so, so we go full circle. So be prepared to respond to people as effectively as um, the opportunity arises. And there is a saying that luck is preparation meets opportunity. That's luck. So if you are prepared, you will be very lucky mm. because mm. you will always be ready. And that's you why- You always and be ready. And why is the title? What's the title? Stay ready to be ready. Wow. Wow. You'll always be ready. And so for those people out there that are really desperately- um, trying to figure out like, how do I move myself forward? Well, now's a good time to say to yourself, well, what do I need to be prepared for when we come out of right. this, this system, right? What, what can I do? And I, I would like to like, I, I came up with some really fun ways for some of our business read, you know, business um, viewers 
to yeah. get ready. So say, for instance, you're a manicurist or a hairdresser and you're yeah. like right now sitting there thinking, I can't touch another human being at this precise moment and time. You do know that you've still got a client base, right? If you're prepared, you'll know this. So why not go for your database and say to people, right, if you want to be the first, because imagine all of these people, men and women, barbers, everything, are sitting yeah. at home and as soon as they say, we can start going to work, whether, whatever. Most people, most people who care about their grooming will be going to their barbers, going to their hairdressers. Yes. You can say, if you put a deposit down now, 10 pounds now, you'll be the first in the chair. What is it that you're trying, what is it your customers want? To get in and out as quickly as possible. So if you can allocate them time, then they know what they're doing and you're generating income. Be yes. prepared. Yes. So if you sit down and really think up of ways that you can really maximize what happens on the other side of this and yes. write that plan out and then start executing it, you'll be ready to, to go with the new system. People that are homeschooling, there'll be ways that, you know, tutors now can educate children in a different way. There's going to be yes. so many different things, opportunities out there. Car washing. And, and also, yeah. And also, Nicola, um, something which I was thinking about, and, and I'm going to say, ladies and gentlemen, you need to be in a state of readiness. That's what Nicola is saying, a state of yeah. readiness. But something I just I just thought about, you know the raft of persons always talk about homeschooling? Yes. I believe that there's going to be an increase of homeschooling at this time when parents actually recognize and say, hang on a second, I can do this, I can do this, and blah. You know, a lot of homeschooling is going to happen again. And then Absolutely. you're going to have coaches for homeschooling coming out as well. So how to <laughs> Listen, because there's a legal aspect to that, yes. as well as an understanding of how it works with local authority. Even, I mean, I've got a 13-year-old, yes. and I'm looking at that as – I was looking at it before, to be totally honest with you. And mm. now all this has done is given me a test bed period of time to see if I'm wow. capable of doing this. So for me, it's kind of like, oh, there's a potential this <laughs> working. There's a potential of this working, and there's going to be a new way of parents approaching schools. I I reckon I will put money on. Parents will start to say, we will send our kids to school for three days a week, and we will homeschool our children for two days a week, for those yeah. that can't homeschool per, full time. Yeah. I you know think what? there's going to be a massive yeah. change. You know what I'm thinking as well, and, and, and this is a key, something that just came up a while ago, is, ladies and gentlemen, is for you to use this time as well to do some testing. So yes. some testing of something. I've, no, I've, given my, I've given myself a challenge. I've got Premier Adobe. And I said, what I'm going to learn to do is to do a lot of editing. I'm going to spend some time, allocate some time to do some editing. Because of course, with what I do, I always have to get person to do the major editing. I'm saying, hang on a second. Let me just actually learn some of this myself. So it, mm -hmm. it's, for maybe it's for people also to start to do some things that you've never done before, test it out for a period of time, and you'll be surprised. Yeah. And, and uh, can I just leverage off of that, actually, because you, yes. you speak about testing in regards to upskilling yourself, but yes. also testing in regards to market research. So this is a perfect time to reach out to people, do your Zoom calls and do market research. Everyone is putting things on Facebook polls and people are open to engaging in these conversations now in a, in a different way that they were pre um, Corona virus. Wow. And so wow. this is a really great opportunity, again, to put yourself out here. Even coming on this call today, I'm doing a webinar tomorrow, and I saw mm. in another group someone asking a similar question to what I'm addressing. So I was able to go through there and see what people's responses were so I can address those issues. That's wow. market research, things that I don't have to pay for. Right. Except so, my time. So, so, so therefore, what is happening now is that Information galore, put it this way. We're at an information galore now whereby people are actually bombarding us even with information, some information that you don't need. I always, I say to people sometimes now, tell you what, give me a little preamble of what that video is because I want to, rec I don't want to reclaim my time. Like Mark, that lady in America, the American um, Congress, she always said, I reclaim my time. I'm saying, guys, listen, I, I'm not going to watch a video. Give me a little precursor give me something because i don't mm -hmm. want to come say i want to reclaim my time but the point i'm trying to say here is that there's so much information which is going out there now that mm -hmm. we have to pay for people are, like, like yourself people people are coming out and giving giving their time giving their services and people need to actually zero into it as much as possible
Okay. And can I just say something about that, right. um, Silburn? Because I think we're really covering these five tips really well. Yes. When you want to shut, clo um, narrow down on the information that you're receiving, this is where you can leverage your tribe because yes. your tribe will know the information you need, right? So let's just give an example. For instance, I know you had Z Roberts on the show. We do very yeah. similar things, right? Yeah. Branding, PR, marketing, that kind of stuff. We can talk about the same thing, but it can come from a different perspective, yeah. yes. a different way of addressing it. Someone can send, see both those pieces of information, know that these information is more relevant to the person that's receiving it than the person does, right? Because they're part of their network. Yes. The person that's looking objectively that doesn't know either can spend an hour watching me, an hour watching V, and still be none the wiser. Yes. You can leverage your tribe to help direct you into the right points. And it's the same, you know, I always say there's so many different loaves of breads on the shelf. The person, yes. your friends will say to you, try this one because this is what is good for you. This is what, you know, I know will address, uh, sit with your digestive system, whatever the case may be. It's the same with every piece of information you're receiving. Use wow. your leverage of your, your tribe to help narrow down where you get that information from. Ladies and gentlemen, there are the tips are. Five tips from Nicola Millington. Powerful. And um, before, I, before I, I, I summarize, Nicola, any last word that you want to just share to persons? I just think for people that are watching the channel, do not underestimate the power of what's being done here. And yeah. the reason I say that is because we can so easily um, negate what's on our doorstep for thinking that what's on the other side is so much brighter. Recognize the information here is as powerful and will drive you forward. Fantastic. Well, ladies and gentlemen, what Nicola has been talking about and the topic that we said was um, stay ready to be ready. In a sense, what we're talking about is be in a state of readiness. Be prepared. And she set out five tips. And one of the things I say all the while, I want to give five tips. I'm asking person, give me five tips, key tips that will empower and add value to person's lives as this time. You almost start with your foundation, the physical, the mental, the spiritual, and emotional. That is so crucial. The foundation, now you set the stage, you set the base now, and you move on now to leverage. Leverage the persons around you. At this time, what we have with COVID, people are around. If they say they're not at home, you say you're at home, man. You're at home. I know you're at home. Talk to me now and stuff like that. You know? Unless you're working from home. But leverage your, your network. Leverage the person that you have access to. Never forget um, Tyrees one time did a video and Tyrees said, access, access. Access is so important and is actually costly. The person that you have access to, utilize it. Don't minimize it. And be patient at this time. Be patient as you build. Invest in yourself. And Nicholas said, it's not about in money, but in everything. The failures, the success, or whatever. It is investing in yourself in different ways. And be prepared. As we said, be in a state of readiness. And that's the most important thing. Nicola, did, was that a good summary? Thank you for your time, Silva. I really appreciate it. Pleasure is mine. And I want to thank you so much for coming on. And thank of you. course... And uh, ladies and gentlemen, tell people, uh, even though I'll put it on, tell how people can get all of you, Nicola, at the same time. Um, though... Right now, my favorite my favorite platform of choice is actually LinkedIn. LinkedIn, so, okay. Yeah, so that, but anything you're looking for for me, just type in F for Freddie, P for Peter, comms, that's C O W M S, and yes. you'll be able to find me. Fantastic. That's... Yes. And, it, and, and, and also you'll find on Instagram because I saw. So you're tagging me on Instagram, ah, Instagram and Facebook. <laughs> it's all over the network as much as possible. Yeah, right. We want, we want to spread the love. <laughs> spread the love. Nicola, listen, I want to thank you so much and have a good evening. And I'm much yeah. appreciate it for this. Okay? You too. Bye. -bye. Bye. Thank you. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for joining. And of course, I was with Nicola Millington. Um, powerful words. And as Nicola said, let's not underestimate these gem of information that persons are coming to and saying to you. But anyway, I just want to say now that tomorrow night at 7 p.m., I'll have the Jamaica High Commissioner, um, Honorable Seth Ramakon, His Excellency, um, to come on and just talk about um, the, the, the Jamaica High Commissioner and also some of the things regarding COVID as well. Now, that is 7 o'clock. Now, because I had to work with his time, I also had booked in already the doctors. Remember, I always have an update on COVID um, with the doctor, um, David Burton, and I'm going to be joined by his wife, who is a 
epidemiologist, um, Carla Burton as well. And we're gonna talk about the update. I think tomorrow is the end of the, the, the time when 100,000 people are supposed to be able to be tested as well on the front line. I wanna see the government in the market. We're gonna talk a bit about PPE as well, and maybe touch a bit on masks because I have a plan to do a show on masks smoking you know what i mean <laughs> as you know which jim carrey i'm going to talk about masks lots of persons are, are making masks and i'm going to try to delve into that but maybe not tomorrow with uh the doctors but maybe planning a show with a couple of guests one from jamaica state so or wherever ladies who are making masks and i have to get an expert in it as well just to talk about because mask is not mandatory in jamaica mask is i think it's been mandatory in also um Scotland, Nicholas Surgeon will say, in the UK, they're sort of not saying it's mandatory because they say they don't want to take away um, a lot of the resources that should be going to the frontline staff and the nurses as well. So, so I'm going to talk on that at some point, but tomorrow night I'm going to have a doctor, Dr. David Burton, who is an ophthalmologist, and his wife, Carla Burton, who's an epidemiologist, and we're going to talk about where we are now with COVID. I've been having them for the past three weeks, just to give a, an update on, on that. And... Uh, and hopefully on Friday, I should have Aaron Branch. He's a digital specialist from Staffordshire, I think Birmingham or so. Aaron's supposed to come on or being well. And next week, I've got um, the, the, the Jen and Jay from Hustle and Heels. Uh, next week, Friday, I believe. And also, I believe Monday or Tuesday, Mr. Stephen O'Keys, who is an anchor in, America, in Canada. We're going to look at how Canada is operating with the COVID as well and, and make some comparisons, you know, a bit about. Uh, uh, more black persons are dying and and BME, and hopefully, I'm I'm still waiting to hear from Minister Chris Tufton uh, from Jamaica to give an update as well as to how Jamaica is faring with the COVID as the figures are increasing. I want to thank you so much for coming on, and those on Instagram or for coming on as well. It's much appreciated. Thank again for Nicola Millington who came in and shared some gems. I want to thank you so much for that. Very powerful time. Don't miss out on any of these sessions. You can check back and you can realize that there have been, if you have known, there are four interviews which I've had so far. Um, one was Anthony Francis, um, Yannick Page, V. Roberts, and Julian Hall. Nicola Millington added to the list and many more. And if you know someone who is very key on giving some empowering tips at this time to help and to build persons, I'm here. I'm just a conduit, a platform for it. And I've got a psychotherapist who is in the platform to look at this mental state, um, domestic violence, which is happening out there in the communities. Why that is happening, I'm going to get some shed some light on it as well. Okay. Remember to like and subscribe to the Silburn Show, which I appreciate it, on YouTube. Um, go on to Silburn TV on Facebook and also on Instagram, uh, Facebook, and I'm actually on LinkedIn, but I don't do Snapchat. Okay, smoking. <laughs> Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Silburn, and I'm out. And have a wonderful and good evening.